In this episode of Book of the Beast, we're going to be going over Orc Decurion Part 2, and that is running the Decurion without the Council. And so there's a big advantage to running the Decurion without the Council is that you don't have to pay the huge point tax for the Council. The difference is though you're not going to get your Fearless every turn. And there's some other things to think. So there's really pretty much no limit to how you can build this list. Um, with the, the 10 auxiliary choices, you can put pretty much anything you want to in there. Up to your point limit, of course. But the um, biggest thing to remember, I'm going to bring up some quick points here on how to run the Decarian like this. The first thing to remember is that you won't have Gazgul running around killing everything. So that means all the damage has to go back to the troop choices. The, the, the boys and your ox choices. So you have to upgrade your boys to be able to actually do something. So in the, in the list with the Decurion, the, the boys themselves are minimal at best. And that's simply because there's not enough points to upgrade them. Here, you want to spend some points on your boys' units. Six units of boys can be quite potent. No doubt about that. You could even, you know, hypothetically fit in you know, five full units of boys, five 30-man squads, in the Decarian and Wong every turn. Um, and you just take a minimum ox choice. Because all you need is, a, is the Wa Band and one ox choice, which can be as cheap as an 18-point 18 mech, 18 mech gun. But it's definitely a way to do it. So it's almost like having a green tide without having a green tide. And you have some other stuff to back them up, too. Um, so one thing, so there's two very important points here that we need to keep on. Keep it thinking when you build a list. One, boys have to do all the work. So that's the very first biggest point you have to realize is that your boys units have to go be able to go out and kill everything. They have to have survivability or numbers and power claws. So in the list that I was playing, I took all six units of the boys, I took three units of art boys, maxed out art boys in trucks with um, power claws of course, and then I took three 20 man shooter boy units with two rockets and power claws in each. So that every unit was a threat to something. And then so whether it be, you know, running across the board, so giving these guys either a bunch of survivability with, unfortunately though, you can only take one pain boy because you only have one HQ slot. Um, or one command slot available in the Decurion. So you can take one big unit of 30 art boys with the pain boy and put the mech in there to absorb challenges because um, you have to take a mech in the formation too. Um, or the pain boy with, with a big unit of mega knobs or knobs um, and a battle wagon or truck. You can even you know, use the battle wagon as your ox so you don't have to spend extra points on it. Um, Something like that. So you can you can you can add a bunch of, of punch and survivability into the units you have to take. Um, and the reason why that is number two, war boss must live. I cannot stress this point enough. The war boss is what has your power or your WA rule. It's no longer with this codex, it's not an army wide rule you just get. It's only for the war boss. So your war boss must live. Without an invul save, Gazzy's two up invul save, it wasn't a big deal. Who cares? He can run up, punch anything. The only time I've ever had Gazgul die was when he got stomped out on six. Other than that, he's virtually unkillable. Well, unless you got really bad dice rolls. But other than Gazgul, you don't have that. So your war boss... And on top of it, being part of the Decurion, the war boss must issue and accept challenges. And against other characters, that's going to be a short-lived war boss. So in order to gain the benefit, the war boss must live. So your war boss will not be a frontline assault unit. So when I was running this, I would run the war boss in mega armor with the super cyborg. And because that eternal warrior and built-in feel no pain, 
is not to be easily dismissed. Yeah, I could take the lucky stick, but all it takes is one failed lookout, sir, on a Vindicator, and your war boss is gone. At least with the Super Cyborg, if you fail that lookout, sir, you're not going to get insta-killed by a Strength 10 hit. So, and in addition to giving him the Super Cyborg, keep him in the back. So what I did with my war boss I gave him mega armor the super cyborg and I teamed it up with a big unit of ludas to get the ludas to slow and purposeful so it was in the back, so the, the war boss had 12 bodies around him to absorb lookout sirs. Was able to make the Ludas better with the move and shoot. And was able to stay in the back while the boys ran up and did all the work. So, but other than those two key points, those are the only things you really need to keep in mind when building a list with the Decurion outside the, without the council. Um, but other than that, the, the possibilities are virtually limited, unlimited. Because uh, I said, you can still make a minimum unit of boys. And if you want to use your ox choices for all the damage. Let's say flyers, the uh, air armada. Or a bunch of bikes, war buggies, and death copters. And your speed freaks, ox choice. Is another good possibility. You can add in tank busters and commandos or any other heavy hitting unit from the specialists, speed freaks, uh, Stompa, Gorkonaut, any of those. You could actually fit into the carrying of the Stompa, but unfortunately the walkers don't have Eerie Go, so, um, you know, unless you don't run a Dread Mob. The Dread Mob gives the walkers Eerie Go, but even that's a possibility. I wouldn't take it because, you know, I don't like walkers, especially the. Gorkonos and Gorkonos are so heavily overpriced, but you can do it. You can absolutely do it. I don't think you can fit in both the Goth Kill Mob and the Dread Mob in 1850. Um, I'd be really pushing it, but you could try. Of course, then you have to keep track of which units have every go and which you don't. I don't know. If you like walkers, you know, that might not be a bad way to go with the Goth Kill Mob and a Dread Mob. If you can get that in 1850, you know, that might be fun to play. It won't be very competitive, but it'll be fun to play. Anyway, off topic completely. Total tangent. Um, but yeah, so the uh, the wall band, when you get right down to it, isn't that expensive if you just keep everything minimum. So you have a lot of room left for your uh, for your ox choices if you want to build something completely different. Um, I mean, you have to think about you know things like if you take war bikes, they don't benefit from the wall, so there's no point in really doing that. So kitting out your boys to do all the work. Yeah, I said even just massive units of, of boys. Because you have to take six of them and a full unit with the full unit of 30 with power claw is what, 220? So yeah, you could probably fit six full units of slugger boys in 1850 with being able to run and charge every turn. I don't have that many otherwise I might actually try it <laughs> so that's it as I said there's not a lot to do there's not a lot to think about the create the, the possibilities are endless when it comes to building the carrying without the council but keep those two big points in mind one your boys have to do the work and two your war boss your war boss must live if you keep those two points in mind when you're building your list it will be a surprisingly effective way to play the Orc Army. So that's it for this episode of Book of the Beast, and I'll talk to you later.